What's up, everybody? My name is Michael or Karatsi Online here with Streamer Square here with just a little video about the EQ in Reaper, uh, or more specifically, the re EQ in Reaper. And um, just to explain it, because it's a little bit easier, or actually a lot easier for me to explain it visually, showing you guys what I'm doing live as opposed to trying to do pictures about it because that's a lot easier with the noise gate and the compressor um but with the eq it's a little bit different it's quite a different beast and especially in the wrong hands and if you, and if you don't know what you're doing you'll actually do a lot more damage than than good so that's why i wanted to do a video explaining sort of what it does and i did a ton of research just sort of how to do eq um because before this video i actually or before using an eq I had no idea what it is, so I've done all the research for you um, just to get the basics. So you can do your own research if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of it, but I'm going to show you the basics and sort of what can help enhance your recording experience. So let's let's open the EQ and, and see what we have. So let's click the FX button, open up your FX window, and so you should already have the regate and the recomp applied um, if you've been following the guide thus far. Now the EQ is in the middle here because the order actually does matter in terms of what how Reaper processes your audio. Like the order specifically doesn't matter too much, but um, once you have your settings, it definitely matters after that. Just a, a little side note, because it, it processes your audio from top to bottom in terms of what effects are in the window. So it goes through my that my audio goes through the regate first, then it goes which is the noise gate, then it goes through the EQ, then it goes through the compressor. Um, so once I have these settings, if I dragged these around, which helps change the order, um, I would sound uh, quite a bit different um, because it's the, the way it's processing my audio is different. So just make sure you stick to one order. Um, I definitely would recommend the, e, uh, the the gate being first, just because that's the first thing that your audio should activate and pass through. And I, and I would have the uh, EQ then recomp. Um, but if you have if you already have stuff set, just make sure not to change it around. Um, and always trust your ear. Um, if it sounds good, it sounds good. So let's go to the EQ. So this is what you're going to be greeted with if you add in the re-EQ. Um, again, you can go to the ad section um, just like before um, and, and search re-EQ for that and, and, and throw that in there. Um, so once you have the EQ, you'll have this. And I'm going to actually enlarge this so you get a better picture of what's going on. I know it does look very overwhelming, but we're only going to go over the basics, um, which is still quite a bit of information. But first, I'm going to go straight off into showing you what you should apply to the EQ, even if you aren't going to tinker around with stuff. So right off the bat, we're going to click this one right here, and it should say low shelf. At the very bottom, you can change the frequency at what it's affecting, and you can change the how much it's boosting or cutting through the gain option. And you can you can choose how wide of range of frequencies it's affecting through the bandwidth. Now, I guess I should explain what an EQ is first. <laughs> so an EQ stands for an equalizer, and essentially all it does is target specific frequencies or frequency ranges and either cuts them or boosts them. Now, in our case, what we want to use an EQ for is to cut the bad frequencies out mainly to enhance the good frequencies, and that is actually called subtractive EQ. And it's what you should do anyways. Um, you should cut frequencies, cut the bad frequencies, to enhance the good frequencies. Um, I know some people, once they figure out what an EQ does, they might want to boost the bass. That, that's usually the first thing that a lot of new people are going to want to do to get that big, that epic boominess sound to their voice. Don't do that. That's actually going to make you sound pretty terrible. It's going to muddle up the rest of your voice, and anyone like me who's wearing high-quality stereo headphones or using a subwoofer stereo system, it's going to create a lot of rattling, and it's just not going to sound good. So please avoid that. And also, preface this, Every microphone voice environment is going to be different from person to person. All of everything I'm talking about in terms of what settings work for me are 100% going to be different for you. This tool especially, you're going to have to do a lot of testing to figure out what works best for your voice, your environment, and your microphone. So anyways, let's continue. So what we want to do is cut out really, really low frequencies with this number one right here. And the reason for that is the even the fundamentals of frequency or sorry, the fundamentals of speech generally only happen around that 85 to 250 hertz range. Um, and those are the most important ones that we want to really focus on. Um, anything below 80 hertz is just really low boominess and really low bass that we aren't, that's not really adding anything to our voice. It's actually taking away from it. Additionally, any low frequency below 80 hertz is generally, generally going to be lower end stuff like 
fans running in the background. Uh, maybe you maybe it's loud thumping in the distance or a truck driving by your house. This will actually help cut out those frequencies. So this, in addition to it, in, this in addition to your noise gate is really going to affect how your environment affects your microphone. Um, so we're going to actually select the one and go to type at the very bottom here. It's going to be a drop down menu. Don't worry about all of these effects. We're only going to be explaining the um, few that we're going to be using. And you're going to want to select high pass. Now you'll probably actually have noticed a difference in my voice already. So you'll see this middle line that everything's that everything was sitting on before. So um, if we switch this back to a um, low shell, this is all zero dB. So everything's level. This is with no EQ applied. If I drag things up or down, it's going to affect how my voice sounds. So if I drag this up, it's boosting sort of the lower end of my voice, and you'll probably hear a lot more bass, a lot more boominess. Um, these are all the low frequencies. It goes from low left, you know, it goes low to high, left to right. Um, and you can see the frequencies at the bottom as well as at the very bottom. You can see down here shows what frequency it's targeting. And any anything in the bluish area is what's getting boosted. Or in some cases, what we want is to cut those frequencies. And you can obviously hear how this is changing my voice too. Um, if anything goes wrong, you can always right click any band or parameter and just reset it to zero. Um, but to, for this one, we're selecting high pass. And then what this does is it lets anything above a certain frequency through the microphone and cuts anything below it. So this one, you can't drag around like we did the other band. Um, this one only goes along a linear path uh, and it just targets a certain frequency. And what we wanna do is go down here in the bottom right, you can highlight the frequency, put in 80 Hertz. You can probably hear that it's taking out a lot of that really low end boominess, but I'm still keeping um, some of that, you know, bass fullness of my voice, but cutting out a lot of the unnecessary bassness and boominess that we don't want in our voice. And especially if you are someone, th someone with a really, really, really deep voice, this is going to be a helpful tool and to help add some clarity to it. Um, now, again, this is all based on mostly on my voice. Um, if you have a really, really deep voice, you may want to jump down to 70 hertz or maybe a little bit lower. If you're a female, you can afford to go higher. Um, these are, of course, just general uh, general uh, things I'm talking about. And you're really it's going to really be up to you to figure out what works best for you. So this is cutting out all the low end frequencies past 80 hertz. Um, any, like I said, anything really, really low that's not adding to our voice. Additionally, we want to do things on the opposite side as well. So we're going to take this, we're going to click the number four. We're going to go down here and select the low pass. And we're going to actually drag that to about 20,000. Reason for that is the human ear can only hear about 20 to 20,000 hertz approximately. Um, obviously that changes from person to person. But again, anything past 20,000 hertz, you're not adding to your voice and it's just unnecessary noise mixing in with your voice whether you realize it or not um, so this is stuff like really hissing noises hissing in the background maybe even like hissing from your microphone that can help with that uh, it can help with that so those are the two main ones you want to add as an eq even if you're not tinkering around with it and i'll actually make a, a note in the in the thread or sorry in my guide that for people who don't want to watch this video and just want to focus on the important stuff for the EQ filter, these are the only two things you need. So from here, feel free to shut the video off. You're good to go. This is already enhancing your recording experience. But if you're like me and you want to sort of get the most out of your microphone and your voice, um, we're going to tinker around with some stuff. So this next part might get a little longer. So I'm going to show you my EQ and see if you can spot the differences and the subtle subtleties, subtle changes in my voice. So this is with my EQ applied. Now you've already probably heard quite a bit of a difference in my voice. Um, again, if you're not using like headphones or you don't really have the ear for it, you might not notice a difference. And again, majority of people won't, but for people like me, um, you, you will notice a difference and again, Overall, it's nice to be able to get the most out of your voice. Um, we are looking for very minor changes. Again, we want cell subtlety because if we change too much in the EQ, you're going to end up sounding very unnatural and people are going to notice. Um, you'll either sound like very boomy and gross or very tinny and like robotic almost, I guess. Um, well, maybe not robotic, but just very hollow, I guess, I guess is a better way to put it. So, and the main reason I wanted to show this is because these four points that I have, 
Additionally, you can notice that I had more that I have more bands than I started with. Um, the bands are the ones that you can drag around and affect certain uh, ranges, and those that's the only other type of um, parameter that you'll parameter that you'll need. Um, if you ever want to add more bands to add more customization, just right click. You can add a new band, and then you can drag that around and and see how it affects your voice. Um, you can always delete it as well. You can all the information you need is just by right clicking and all the options you need, like resetting it to zero dB. That's all you need is there. So anything going high obviously is boosting and you can also hover over it to see how much you're boosting or cutting the frequency by and at what frequency that um, it's peaking at essentially. So right here, I have it set at 100, around 150 Hertz and it's boosting by about 2.4 decibels um, and it's affecting, a, it's affecting a certain octave or a certain range. So if I drag the bandwidth meter, that actually makes it Oop, I, have, I had the wrong one selected there. Um, also, you can hit Control Z like in any editing program to undo your last action. Um, you can use the bandwidth to drag and affect a very narrow parameter or a very narrow frequency, or you want to do a broader and affect a broad range of frequencies and make things a little more subtle. For boosts, you'll always you'll generally want to go wide, and for cuts, you'll want to go narrow. But again, don't do any of the boosts boosts until you've cut some of the bad frequencies out. Um, the bad ones are generally going to be your higher end frequencies around the 5,000 to 6,000 range, which is what uh, is called sibilance. So if you have, um, if you are a sibilance speaker, for example, your S's um, generally sound more like hisses. And the, that's, that's essentially what sibilance is. Um, it's when the letter S sounds more like a hissing snake. Um, so you can, uh, even though boosting in sort of the 2000 to, fi uh, 2000 to 5000 range um, can help with clarity, which is what I'm doing, or what's called vocal intelligibility, that also has the effect of bringing in sibilance because sibilance usually occurs around 4.5 to 6000 hertz. So you really want to be careful with that. If, you're, if you do want to boost your uh, vocal intelligibility and your clarity, just be careful of sibilance, um, and that is what I'm cutting here. So it's around the 5,000 to 6,000 mark, um, and you can obviously adjust that as you need and wh wherever your sibilance is for your voice. Um, it can help with that hissing noise. Um, additionally, down here around the 400 hertz, hertz range, we're, we're cutting things by about 3 dB to sort of affect the uh, what's called the muddiness of my voice. So without the EQ, my voice I find is pretty muddy. Um, in the lower end, uh, I have a sort of a deeper voice, but as well as I can go a little bit higher. Like I don't naturally have a super, super deep voice, but it's deep enough that depending on where, what I'm speaking about, um, it, it, I find it sounds a little muddy and it's a little bit tougher to get that clarity out. So we want to cut that muddy frequency out to bring out that clarity or that vocal intelligibility. Um, and cutting out that those lower frequencies with the high pass also should help with uh, taking out some of that low, deep boominess um, that we don't want. So I find the muddiness is around 300 to 500 hertz. Um, again, changes on your voice depends if you're female or male. Um, females I'll find probably won't have much problem with muddiness, um, but they probably won't want to boost much of the intelligibility or clarity because they'll, they'll already be in the higher frequencies. And females usually have a have a problem um, with their sibilance as well. Um, so that is what this band right here is doing. And then this band here is just focusing more on that warmth and that bass. Um, so I do, you know, I am boosting some of this intelligibility, um, but I don't want to forget my bass because I am cutting in some of that, uh, I am cutting out some of that, those really low frequencies, but I do want to keep some of that bassiness and that uh, fullness in that lower end of my voice um, without sacrificing quality and intelligibility. So that is what this band is doing. It's affecting around 150 Hertz. Um, generally, generally for males, it's about one, uh, it's about 80 to 180 is a, it, I find is the range, um, for that. And also again, the, the fundamentals are here as well. So making sure you keep those fundamental frequencies of speech is going to be really important in actually making sure people can understand you. But those are an explanation of all the frequencies. Um, this one right here is just the intelligibility and clarity one. When you get from 3,000 to 5,000, or sorry, 3,000 to 6,000, that's generally going to be both the sibilance area, which is the treble area, but also if you if you can balance it, it can bring in some brightness to your voice. Um, 
around 1,000 to 5,000 is sort of um, that clarity or intelligibility range. Um, so I'm really wanting clarity in my voice because especially this is really good for this area here is really good for people who may have intonation problems. Um, definitely check out my speech guide uh, here on Streamer Square if you if you want more tips and tricks on improving your speech and, and clarity and stuff like that. But this will help as well clear up um, some of some people's voices like mine and uh, just make things sound good. So as you can hear, I'll, I'll switch back to my non-EQ voice. So here you can probably still hear some of that muddiness come back in. Um, in some areas, it might sound a little more full, but as well as you'll hear a lot of that, a little bit more boominess as well in my in my voice, which is what the EQ takes out, um, the unnecessary boominess, I guess, because we still want to keep um, the natural sound of your voice, but again, cutting out those unnecessary frequencies and enhancing those uh, good frequencies. And this is what I sound like um, with the EQ filter applied. So that's going to do it. Um, that's an explanation of sort of the main parameters that you're going to want to play around with and how you can play around with them. And really, that's all it is. It's playing around. I live. I, I literally spent hours playing around with this tool and figure, figuring out what works best for me and works best for, works best for my microphone, my environment, and my voice. Um, so the main ones, of course, are the high pass that we started out with and the low pass that we started out with. Those will help anyone regardless, but anything in the middle, you really don't need it. It's just mainly for the people who want to get the most um, out of their recording experience. But that's going to do it for me, guys. I think I'm going to be done with this video. <laughs> I've made it long enough for those people who really want to tinker around, tinker around with stuff. And then the rest of you can just uh, use the low pass and the high pass and you'll be good to go. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide and this video. And uh, yeah, happy streaming, everybody.